Hello, it's Scott Manley here. Today, Virgin Orbit surprised everyone by announcing that they were planning to test launch their Launcher 1 rocket this Saturday. Just a few days, of course, before the big event where SpaceX sends astronauts to the space station. Yes, they are going to test their air launch rocket, which is the first of its kind, the first liquid fueled air launch rocket. And of course, I'm doing the Kerbal version here. Um, this is not a particularly good approximation of a 747, but it does have four engines and carries a launcher underneath its left wing. I'm of course flying a Kerbal version because, well, I like flying Kerbal stuff, and, well, because it's always nice to have footage to talk over rather than showing you my ugly face instead. So, this is going to be used to pad out the video when I don't have enough regular Virgin Orbit uh, footage. The plane they used was formerly an airliner that flew with Virgin Atlantic. When its lease ended, they bought it from Boeing. They actually kept the same name that it had when it was flying under Virgin Galactic. It's called the Cosmic Girl, a reference to the Jamiroquai tune, I would imagine. And I used to fly Virgin Atlantic all the time to the UK. There's a chance I was flying on this at some point. Anyway, as you can see, it fits underneath the right wing. And there's a reason why they put the rocket right there. Because the 747 is actually designed to carry an extra engine in that location. This was a feature that was useful for airlines where they could transport spare engines around to where they were needed by using irregular flights without chartering special cargo flights. One of those engines weighs about six tons, whereas the rocket uh, masses more than 20 tons. So it's not as simple as just slotting the rocket onto the existing pylons. After all, they also need a rapid release system. And yeah, they just need to make sure the whole aircraft can handle the load and can be trimmed out to fly straight and level. And while I'm taking off from Kerbin's Island Airfield, they will launch from Mojave Spaceport. They will then head out west over the Pacific into an area where they will be performing their launches. Uh, their intended route will have them traveling to the southeast and performing the release. They're essentially trying to go for a polar orbit. They can't go for a regular equatorial kind of orbit because that would be launching over the continental US. So they're um, basically making sure that they're launching over the ocean just in case anything goes wrong. This is a first flight. Many times the first flight of a rocket does not work. That doesn't mean that you should be standing in LA looking east looking for an explosion in the sky. It's just as likely they get up there and there's technical problems and then they bring the uh, booster back for another attempt later. It's taken them a couple of years of flying with Cosmic Girl to verify that they are able to perform everything. They've performed several tests to make sure the uh, vehicle will, is stable. They performed a drop test where the aircraft performs the launch maneuver and then released a mass simulator, which was the correct shape and size. So they were able to verify that it is able to perform the launch. Obviously, this thing didn't fire. Instead, it embedded itself in the desert somewhere. And then last month, they successfully performed a test flight where they filled the cryogenic tanks instead of liquid oxygen. They had liquid nitrogen. That was their last big dress rehearsal flight before this Saturday's actual launch attempt. They are confident enough that they will be able to fly this or they are confident enough that they think they have a reasonable chance that this thing will actually perform. So the launch maneuver, I believe, starts around 30,000 feet and the aircraft pulls into a relatively steep climb and then it performs the release. This is important because it gives the booster initial vertical speed. If you compare this to Pegasus, Pegasus uh, launches from a horizontal configuration and it uses a wing to turn itself up. Whereas this launcher, it has very small aerodynamic surfaces. It does obviously has thrust vectoring and some level of control authority from those, but it doesn't need a big wing to be able to turn itself up into the vertical orientation. Combine that with the more efficient propellant and pound for pound this rocket does better than Pegasus. It should be able to put over 500 kilograms into low Earth orbit, you know, assuming you pick the right orbit. And it should cost about $10 million as opposed to $58 million, which the last Pegasus XL launch sold for. 
So this is actually their diagram showing how it works. It's a two-stage rocket. There is actually a three-stage option, which they are selling as potentially a launch vehicle for interplanetary payloads. But for low Earth orbit, you just need the two. The main booster engine is called the Newton 3. It burns kerosene and liquid oxygen. And I think it generates about 36 tons of thrust. It uses a simple gas generator cycle, and the three implies that, well, they made a few other engines. So the Newton 1 and 2 were originally pressure-fed engines, which were developed as part of the ALASA, that's an, a DARPA program to develop, to develop airborne rocket launch capability. Back then, they were actually thinking of using the White Knight 2 vehicle, which would be used by Virgin Galactic. But when the engine got more powerful and the launch vehicle got larger, they switched over to using the 747. The second stage engine is the Newton 4, and it's also a pump-fed engine fed by a gas generator-driven turbo pumps. It, um, this is a nice test image here showing the gimbal capability on that second stage. Now, obviously, if that would be firing in space, it would have a much larger nozzle extension. But using the large nozzle extension in a gimballing test like this is hard because the atmosphere wants to push up inside the nozzle and that causes the flow to be unstable. So they take that off and it may, lets them test stuff that they can't test with the full nozzle on. So the flight profile has the main engine providing thrust for about three minutes, I believe. And then after that, they will, of course, perform the staging and the second stage engine will kick in and carry the booster, will carry the upper stage away from the booster into its target orbit. It will take about four, five to six minutes to get into its initial parking orbit and then the stage is capable of relighting to circularize the orbit to you know, whatever is needed by the customer. So it looks like this is capable of handling payloads more than twice what Rocket Lab handles with their Electron and it also has the added advantage of being able to go down to much lower inclinations. Because it is air launched, it can launch from pretty much any airfield in the world. Therefore, it has uh, the ability to launch into equatorial zero inclination orbits if that is what the customer needs. And right now, given the way the small sat launch market is looking, um, it, it's good to have any advantage. Rocket Lab have been very successful and they are eating everybody else's lunches. Launches, uh, But... If Virgin Orbit can offer either more capable launch vehicles or interstellar, or sorry, interplanetary capabilities or these low inclination capabilities and they can offer a, a price which is comparable to what Rocket Lab is doing, then th there's definitely a good chance that they can turn this into a viable engine. So they have their test launch. If that works, that'll be great. After that, they have a launch contracted with NASA's ELANA program. That's the Educational Launch of Nanosatellites. They also have a sister company called Vox Space, which is providing launch capabilities to US military. And of course, they're using uh, Virgin Orbit as their launcher. They actually signed a contract for $35 million with Space Force to launch uh, an STP, Space Test Program mission. But one long-touted customer won't be launching on Virgin Orbit anymore because that was one web. They initially had a very large orbit and then they cut it back. And there was actually legal action being uh, pursued over this cutback in the contract. But of course, at this point, Launcher 1 is essentially bankrupt and they're not likely to be ordering any more launches and nobody because nobody wants to expand the satellite network. I hope they're successful. There's a lot to like about this. They offer niche capabilities that nobody else can. They soundly undercut the Pegasus and pretty much render that obsolete. And hey, there's also the fact that their plane's called Cosmic Girl, and I like that tune. So best of luck this Saturday to everyone at Virgin Orbit. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.